Welcome to The Author Show, where we present new authors and books. From fiction to self-help and everything in between, you'll find it all here. To watch the TV version of our program, visit AuthorsWebTV.com. That's AuthorsWebTV.com. And now, let the show begin with your hosts, Don McCauley and Danielle Hampson. Hello and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Don McCauley. Today we're welcoming the program author Toy Thomas, and Toy is the author of Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel. A self-proclaimed techie and foodie, Toy was born in Texas but considers Virginia to be home. Growing up in Dallas, she had a strong interest in reading fiction and loved to watch movies. Even today, many of her friends come to her for the answers to movie trivia. Working with computers and cooking lavish meals have become recurring pastimes for this Virginia Beach teacher's assistant. But now she wants to entertain the world with the first installment of her new book series. She's thrilled to take the world on this journey. Toy, how are you? I'm good. Let's start with a big question. Tell us about this book, please. Well, it's a story about two people who meet online, both in search of something to fulfill their lives. But it's not nearly as romantic as it sounds. You see, Myra is a doctor, and for lack of a better term, Giovanni is a freak. Myra thinks that she's found a new purpose in life when she decides to help Giovanni with his many afflictions, which includes gray skin that is sensitive to direct sunlight. It doesn't take long for Maya to realize that there's so much more going on with Giovanni beyond her understanding, and that's where the story really begins to take off. Now, who did you write this book for specifically? In retrospect, I guess I'd have to say I wrote the book for anyone who seems to be a little lost in their life. The book deals on many levels with the idea of finding one's true purpose and living their life accordingly. I wrote the book during a time when I was looking for a purpose in my life, though I didn't know that at the time. So I guess you could say I wrote the book for myself. Now, if you could compare this book with any book out there we might already be familiar with, which book would it be and why? It's hard to do a comparison without misleading people, but I guess I'd have to go with The City of Bones, The Mortal Instruments, number one. The major difference between these two stories is that my book has a more spiritual take on the whole angels and demons and other ideology, and it's really meant for adults, though it is suitable for teens. My book is more emotional, and it's a little less active, though there is a fair bit of action in it. I think the most important thing is that the book is, is more emotional, and it's a, it's a lot more mature. Now, the book is a fantasy. Do you think readers will be able to relate the events of this story to their own lives and, say, reality in general? Uh, yes, I do. Um, the book is very relatable. Even though it is a fantasy, it is more specifically an urban fantasy. It takes on um, modern. It takes place in modern times, and um, it deals with a lot of the same issues that most people are dealing with today. Most of the issues that my characters are dealing with involve, you know, what it is to be a family and how to be a part of one. I think the main things that my readers relate to most is the idea that we often forget about is that even though we might be going through something, someone else is probably going through something worse and we should be grateful for what we have. Now, you're calling this book an urban spiritual fantasy. What is that? Well, I tack on the distinction of spiritual for two reasons. Once you really get into my book and the rest of the series, it kind of falls into the Nephilim genre that's become very popular as of late. Many of these books take a very secular approach to the story, and a few of them stick very much to the theological approach, whereas my book is a blend of secular, theological, and mythological approaches to the subject matter. Um, but I do focus more on the idea of righteousness versus evil as opposed to just good versus bad. And for some reason, that makes a big distinction in the meaning. I also tack on the spiritual aspect of it to downplay romantic notions. I find that a lot of books in this particular genre have a very strong romantic theme. But I feel like if someone wanting to read a romantic story were to read my story, they would be a little bit disappointed. There is a romance, but it's not the major theme of the book. How did you come up with the concept of the story? <laughs> well, that's funny. It's a little bit cliched, but it actually came to me in a dream, and it was a reoccurring dream. I started having the dream about the gray man with no intention of writing a book. Writing a book was the last thing on my mind. The dream began to bother me because I kept having it, even though it never seemed to come to an end. Most of what I dreamed about, I forgot. But then one day, I decided to start writing down what I could remember. Then finally, my dream came to a climax and ended shortly after. 
the gray man in my dream had turned into an angel and I stopped dreaming about him. But this isn't exactly a spoiler. The dream inspired my book, but the stories are very different. How did you come up with the title of the book in the series? At first, I was shocked that I had even written the book. It all seemed to happen so fast. When I went back through the story, trying to, you know, figure out what was the cause of Giovanni's torment, I decided that it was a curse. So I had to go back and make some changes to the story to de um, develop the whole curse angle. At that point, I came up with the title, Eternal Curse. But after coming up with that title, I began to have all these other ideas about things that the characters were going through. But none of them were in line with what was happening in my current story. There was no way I was going to rewrite the story, but that's when I decided I could just continue the story. It was at that point that the first book became Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel, and I began to work on the Eternal, Eternal Curse series. Who are the main characters in the story? There are three main characters in the first installment of the Eternal Curse series. Giovanni is the title character, and he is the hero of the series. He's very dark, but not necessarily bad, even when he is being destructive. Myra is the quote-unquote love interest, um, but her character is really much more than that. She's not the typical ray of sunshine that brightens every room, but she does bring a great deal of strength to the story. For most of the book, the reader thinks the story's all about her until Giovanni's true purpose is revealed. Then there is Abraham. Being the big sci-fi geek that I am, I really couldn't complete my story without adding in an old wise man or a mentor to guide my characters, and that's exactly what Abraham does. What's the period and the main setting? Even though there's a great deal of traveling back uh, in this book to look into the past, the story takes place in the year 2012 at a very large hidden estate in a fictional town called Whittleton. Whittleton is located in southeastern Virginia and encompasses the hidden estate of Sinclair Manor, where Giovanni lives. This is one of those instances where a writer writes about what they know. Being a resident of Virginia and seeing my fair share of small towns and large estates, this was the perfect setting for me to develop, um, the, feel comfortable developing the interactions of my characters. So what's the major conflict in the story? The major conflict in this story is that Giovanni is not normal. He may not even be human. You see, Myra takes on the task of trying to figure out exactly what Giovanni is, but of course it's not that easy. Giovanni is keeping a very dark, very big secret from her in hopes that she'll be able to help him without finding out the truth about him. So of course nothing goes as planned and Giovanni isn't able to keep his secret for very long. But then that's when he and Myra together realize that facing his demons, so to speak, is the answer that they've been looking for all along. Would you say that any of the characters in this book are similar to you or perhaps a reflection of other people? Well, yes. Myra actually is a hodgepodge of several women that I know, especially women in my family. Her personality is very much like my own, but she looks more physically like my sister. Abraham is actually an amalgam of stereotypical father types, but when I think about it, I really, really do think that I kind of had my grandmother in mind when I came up with his character. Is there anything special or unique about the characters? Well, that kind of depends on what you consider special and unique. Um, one thing I did with all of my characters is I gave them names that were very specific to the characters and the character traits that they represent. Myra's name means miracle. Abraham's name means father, and it just goes on and on. Even the names of my places have a specific meaning. I even wrote a whole blog about it in case anyone was ever interested in it called 40 Days and Nights of Eternal Curse. Was there any kind of research or development that went into the story? Uh, yeah, actually there was. I mean, you'd think with writing fiction there wouldn't be a great deal of research. Either I'm thorough or I'm a glutton for punishment. But since my story does go back into time to look at the past a little bit, I wanted to make sure that my events seem real and plausible. It would be really silly to have someone strike it rich on the stock market during the Great Depression without a very good reason. But I didn't stop at just historical research. I also looked into angelic facts and histories to compare with the story that I was making up. Even though I was making up my own mythology about angels and demons, I thought it would be nice if I didn't openly offend the history of any particular angelic entity by not having any regard for their story. After that, I went into super development mode with my characters 
and outlined their entire lives from birth to death just to be sure I didn't leave anything out. Would you say that you have a specific writing style? Um, to be honest, if I have a writing style, I'm not really sure what it is. I like to tell stories, even though I've heard so many people say, show me, not tell me, and I'm working on that. I find that I can be very descriptive when I want to be, but there are times when I'd rather the reader have a chance to decide how something looks or feels. Needless to say, I have a pretty good vocabulary, but I try to keep that in check. I don't think that superfluous words belong in every story. I try to focus on telling the story more than just filling up the pages with flowery language. Some people have said that I'm too descriptive, but when compared to video game prompts, I guess I am. Other people think that I'm not descriptive enough, but then I really wouldn't go out of my way to turn 270 pages of a story into 370 pages without any major changes. I, I guess what I do is I write for my own personal satisfaction. I write until I'm satisfied, and then I put it out into the world and just hope someone likes it. Who or what influenced your writing the most? Well, I'm a big kid at heart, so it makes sense that the writers I encountered during my early years have stuck with me and influenced me in so many ways. Curious George, Wizard of Oz, and Alice in the Wonderland all fascinated me and helped build up my imagination, but it was the stories of J.M. Barry that really got me hooked for life. Even today, I hunt down renditions of Peter Pan wherever they appear. I don't write anything like Barry, nor do I write for children, but I can't deny that when I am writing and thinking about the satisfaction that I seek in my writing, I compare it to how I felt the first time I read Peter and Wendy. In your opinion, who should buy this book? I think this book is good for anyone who enjoys reading, but more specifically, I think it's good for people who want a temporary escape. My book will take them away from their lives for just a little while without leaving them completely disoriented upon returning. Anyone looking for uncomplicated entertainment that expands their mind and slips in a sense of hope will enjoy this book. Well, time is getting very short, so the most important question, where can we buy this book? Well, this book is the second edition release of Eternal's Curse, Giovanni's Angel, and it's available for sale at all the major online booksellers, um, Barnes & Noble, Sony.com, Amazon.com, and Smashwords.com. By visiting Smashwords.com, you can also find links for paperback purchases, I can be looked up at Facebook.com Eternal Curse Series and also at my blog, ecsuniverse.blogspot.com. Could you spell your name for us, please? Yes, I publish as Toy Thomas, T-O-I-T-H-O-M-A-S. Well, this has been just great. Our guest today has been Toy Thomas, and Toy is the author of Eternal Curse, Giovanni's Angel. Toy, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. This is Don McCauley wrapping up another edition of The Author Show. If you're an author or know an author, learn how you can help a publisher publish you by visiting helpapublisherpublishyou.com. Each week you receive a listing of publishers, small presses, and others who may be interested in publishing your work. This is a free service of The Author Show. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit www.theauthorshow.com, fill out the form, and we may be contacting you shortly. And if you're an author, don't forget to visit Book Marketing, the author's marketing powerhouse, at www.theauthorsmarketingpowerhouse.com. We look forward to seeing you here next time on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. To contact us, call toll-free 1-877-955-8800. That's 877-955-8800. Or visit theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show. <laughs>